Movers and shakers in Raleigh and Wake County coming together right now to discuss the current state of the city. We'll have that story coming up. And a Raleigh family is mourning the death of a loved one who disappeared while boating at Falls Lake. And Bank of America fined for opening fake accounts and other alleged crimes. We'll explain what the bank's accused of doing. Plus a major victory for President Biden on the world stage. Eyewitness News at 4 starts now. See what's happening this instant from the Raleigh Eyewitness News Center. ABC 11 Eyewitness News at 4 starts right now. First at four, the state of affairs for Raleigh, Wake County, and the state's largest school system. Good Tuesday afternoon, everyone. I'm Joel Brown. I'm Amber Repenta. The Raleigh Chamber holding its annual State of the City, County, and Schools at the Raleigh Convention Center today. I served as moderator for this event. Elena Athens was also in attendance, and she's joining us live now to break down some of the upcoming priorities and policies city and county leaders highlighted at today's event. Elena? Yes, yeah, so much discussed today during this meeting. Marianne Baldwin, the mayor of Raleigh, uh, says that there were some big economic wins for this year, one being the Stadium Series game, which brought in more than $18 million in revenue. But she also says that there are some serious challenges for this city that lie ahead. Affordable housing remains one of those big issues. Uh, there are problems not only with meeting the strong demand for affordable housing, but also in terms of the costs associated with building these new homes homes or apartments. Right now, the city of Raleigh has more than 2,000 affordable housing units in the pipeline and they're expected to be available by 2026. Often though, residents will spend years on a waiting list trying to get into one of those units. Baldwin says one thing she is really excited about is construction starting on a new uh, bus rapid transit line. Back in November of 2016, uh, Wake voters approved a $2.3 billion mass transit investment plan. Work is finally getting started and set to begin along Newburn Avenue. That is our first BRT line. It will be coming under construction in the fall. It's the perfect area and you know I'm excited to get the community engaged and start this conversation about how we move something like that forward. It's a big idea. It's a visionary idea. So this gathering was held on the same day that CNBC ranked North Carolina number one in the country for business in 2023. Many community leaders, uh, they were certainly celebrating this latest accolade and what it means for our economy. North Carolina, however, is falling behind in a sector. So ahead at six o'clock, how some community leaders are responding to that and what their concerns are right now for folks living in our state. Plus, coming up at five, we're going to get an update and tell you what the Wicked County School District says that they're doing right now to retain teachers here, keep them in our area, and how soon a new superintendent will be named for the Wake County School District. We'll have more on that ahead. For now, we're live in Raleigh. Elena Athens, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. The state of the city, county, and school strong, but not without some major challenges. Elena, thank you. Right now at 4, we're learning more about the man killed in that Sunday afternoon boat crash on Falls Lake. The body of 21-year-old Raekwon Massenberg was recovered yesterday following a more more than 30 hour long search. Sean Coffey, live for us back on Falls Lake. He's got the newest details. Sean. Yeah, Joel Raycomb was killed over the weekend when the boat he was riding on with a friend collided with another boat in stormy weather. And that tragedy is serving as a cautionary tale for the dangers of boating in stormy conditions. And NC Wildlife now trying to share some tips for how to prevent another tragedy. We spoke with NC Wildlife earlier, which said that they understand many boaters may not want to take steps like wearing a life vest in the hot summer temperatures. But that's the number one safety measure a boater can take. Obviously, staying apprised of up to the minute weather condition is advised too. And they actually offer courses, some of them free that serve as a sort of boater's ed. And those courses are mandatory for all people born after January 1, 1988 that are operating a 10 plus horsepower boat. But Nathan Green from NC Wildlife says really everyone should take one. We strongly encourage everybody, even if you're not required by law, uh, to go ahead and obtain that boater safety certification. The things that you'll learn in those courses that are led by our officers and others, like the U.S. Coast Guard, are things uh, just as simple as how to hook up your boat for trailering, backing into the water, how to prepare yourself uh, for when you launch. 
And while the family had confirmed the identity yesterday, earlier today, NC Wildlife did finally confirm the identity of that boater recovered from the water as Raekwon Massenberg. And we'll have much more on what NC Wildlife is saying about ways to prevent future tragedies coming up on Eyewitness News at 5. For now, we're live at Falls Lake. Sean Coffey, ABC 11 Eyewitness News. All right, Sean, we'll see you in about an hour with more there. Thank you. And